Today, I want to tell you about some really special musical instruments that were built and played right here in the Appalachian Mountains. But before we talk about them, we need to talk about where is Appalachia? What is Appalachia? So I want to show you a map. Here is a map of the United States, and this section in green is the Appalachian Mountains. It's the Appalachian region. This little area down here is the Appalachian region blown up a little bit bigger so you can see. And right here, where this heart is, that's where we are. That's Knott County, Kentucky. But today, I want to focus in on three instruments. One is called the mountain dulcimer, the mouth bow, and the gourd banjo. I think that the thing that ties these three instruments together, the thing that they have in common, is the fact that these were instruments that anybody could make at home. They were really simple instruments. You didn't have to have a lot of tools or material or expertise to know how to make them. So I want to tell you all about them and we'll start with the dulcimer. The mountain dulcimer is a traditional Appalachian instrument. And in fact, a lot of people think that the mountain dulcimer was born right here in Knott County, Kentucky. The dulcimer is often shaped like this, like an hourglass. It comes in lots of different shapes, though. It has three or four strings. And to play it, you just sit down and put it in your lap like this. The ancestor to the dulcimer is called the Scheiholt. It's a German instrument, and the word Scheiholt means firewood or scrap wood, wood that doesn't have any other purpose. And that gives us a clue that a lot of the first dulcimers were built out of scrap wood, that, 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 uh, that that's all they had to work with. So that's what they used to make some of the first instruments. So I want to sing you a song that I sang growing up when I was little, and I want to teach it to you, and it has a part in it for you. At the end of every verse, you sing the line back at me. You echo it back at me. So I'll, I'll, I'll show you when we get there. This is called, Oh Me, Oh My. Oh me, oh my, what'll I do? I can't find an elephant to tie my shoe. But I know what, and so do you. I don't need an elephant to tie my shoe. No, I don't need an elephant to tie my shoe. Oh me, oh my, what'll I do? I can't find a lumberjack to pour my milk. But I know what, and so do you. No, I don't need a lumberjack to pour my milk. Oh me, oh my, what'll I do? I can't find a dinosaur to eat me up. But I know what, and so do you. I don't need a dinosaur to eat me up. No, I don't. But I know what, and so do you. We don't need a radio to sing a song. No, we don't need a radio to sing a song. Well, we don't need a radio to sing a song because we can do it ourselves. And thanks for singing along with me. 
So I want to show you a little more about how the dulcimer is built. A long time ago people built it out of scrap wood, but now people are doing all kinds of beautiful and amazing things building the mountain dulcimer. So I'm going to take you with me and we're going to go visit my friend Doug who builds dulcimers. Doug's workshop is right here in Hindman, Kentucky, so I just walked across the bridge going over Troublesome Creek to go visit him. This is called a mountain dulcimer, and you know what the word dulcimer means? Well, it comes from another language. It comes from the word dulcet, which means sweet. So, a dulcimer is an instrument with a sweet sound and I think that's a, that's a good name for it. My name is Doug Naselrode and I'm the Master Luthier down at the Appalachian School of Luthery and I also am the director of the Troublesome Creek String Instrument Company. What that means is that I make instruments for people to play and I help people learn how to make instruments for people to play. So we get to make a lot of instruments guitars mandolins and dulcimers now this instrument was made right here on this bench as a matter of fact right here and you're looking at it probably wondering it's got these curvy parts you're probably wondering how in the world do they do that well there's a way and it starts with a walnut tree because all of this wood here is walnut and we cut it into parts, we cut it down into very thin parts which we bend with heat. We have a machine that bends these into the shape of the instrument but you wonder where we get wood that's this thin? Let's go show you. Hey guys, my name is Chris. I'm Luther One here at Troublesome Creek and uh, I'm going to show you guys how we bandsaw our tops, backs, and sides. So, after we get done with that sander, then we got some wood that's so thin you can bend it in your hands. And another thing about it is it starts getting a little sound to it. When you tap on it, it makes a bright sound. So you know that this piece of wood wants to be a musical instrument. So when we get a good sound like that off of it, we do a little more sanding little more cutting and we cut these hearts. You see where we're going with this? These hearts are already cut when we build this instrument. And this piece is really pretty and it's got that really nice bright sound that we like. So then we have some thin strips. Now these are already bent but when we get them they're very straight. And we have a machine that we put these in, and it bends them, and it heats them. There's a little bit of moisture, so it's just like ironing clothes. They, this wood will stay in place from now on after it's been bent like this. And then that becomes the rib or the side of the dulcimer. We make some other parts. We make this, this is called the fingerboard. You can see where those go. 
And really that's just a big square stick of walnut that's been sliced for these little metal pieces to go in here. And these are called frets. Now, I'll show you the importance of the fret here in a minute. But we make the fret board, then we take a chunk of wood and we carve this piece out which is called a peg head. And the peg head is called a peg head because if you look at it, it holds these black things in here. And these black things are tuning pegs. And this is how you can tighten and loosen the string to make sure it's in tune. When we get those on, this thing's about finished. But one of the other things we do before then is we wipe it down with a finish we call French polish which it's a finish on a rag that we just wipe and polish and wipe and polish until it's pretty and it doesn't take as long as you think but isn't walnut a pretty wood we love to use that we're discovering that a lot of different trees make good instruments uh, especially the trees of Appalachia, the trees of Knott County. We have cherry trees that we've cut up to make instruments. We've had Osage orange, uh, maple. So there's some really pretty pieces of maple. Sometimes the, the maple may be spalted and it'll have all these colors and, and lines in it that come from um, just a little bit of moisture damage that happens. And we dry the wood out before it can rot. But then when we come back, we end up with a real pretty piece of wood. Um, we use uh, black locust. You know the old locust tree? We use Osage orange. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> There's a whole number of woods that uh, we're experimenting with and uh, having a great time finding out which one sounds the best. Um, one of our favorites right now is black walnut, and this is the same tree that you get walnuts off of that you eat. Well, when one of those trees come down, uh, uh, the boys will go cut it up and bring it back here because we'll make it into dulcimers if we find one. Well, it would be great if y'all could sit around and watch while I build one from start to finish, but that would take a little while longer. So for now, I'll just say thank you for stopping in and bye. I think it's so cool how Doug can take a piece of wood from just a tree out in the forest and turn it into a beautiful musical instrument. So I wanted to show you how you can do this at home. We're gonna make a whistle out of an acorn. I want you to go out into the woods, go ahead and look on the forest floor and you'll see acorns. And what you're gonna need is the cap off of an acorn. Get you a couple of them, get them in all different shapes and sizes because they all make a different sound. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this acorn cap and you're going to put it on your lower lip like this and you want the bottom part to be tied up against your lower lip kind of onto your chin the upper part of your chin and you want the upper half of that acorn to be up above where where you can blow air across it and you're going to have to twist it around and play with the angle it takes a little bit of patience but when, it, when you get it right it sounds really cool The next instrument I want to show you is called the mouth bow. It's also known as the song bow or the sam bow. And it was played in Appalachia by the Native Americans in this region and the indigenous tribes that lived in Appalachia. But it was also played in South America and in Asia and in Africa. So this instrument is all over the world. Nearly every nation in the world has a, has a instrument like the song bow. And it's really simple. All it is is a string and a stick. It kind of looks like a hunting bow, doesn't it? Now, if I, if I just strum it like that, it doesn't really sound like a whole lot, but the reason it's called the mouth bow is that you would take this end and you kind of put it on the outside of your cheek or you'd put it in the corner of your mouth 
and that would create a resonant chamber in your mouth and that would amplify the sound. So listen to the difference. You can change the sound by moving your tongue around. You can also change the sound by bending the piece of wood. And it sounds really cool when you do both of that at the same time. That's the mouth bow. Don Petty, a musician and artist from North Carolina, was our artist for this week's lesson. He designed this coloring page. This features a band made up of two dulcimer players, a gourd banjo player, and a mouth bow player, which are the three instruments that we're learning about today. So I invite you to color along with me as we learn more about the gourd banjo. The last instrument I want to show you all today is called the gourd banjo. And chances are you've probably heard of the banjo. But this instrument is the ancestor to our modern day American banjo. The thing you need to know about the history of the banjo is that the whole re one of the big reasons it's here in Appalachia and in America is because of slavery. And when folks were first forcibly brought from Africa to, to the southern part of the United States and, and to the Caribbean and to uh, Appalachia, they, brought, they, they came against their will, but they, but they brought with them the music and stories from home. And they started building instruments like this here, here in Appalachia in the south to remind them of the home that they, that they missed so dearly. And if you notice, the reason it's called a gourd banjo is because it's made out of a gourd. Who would have thought? So I brought this to show you. This is a kushaw. It's not exactly the right kind of gourd for a banjo, but I thought I'd show it to you anyway. But if you just picked it out of your garden and you waited a year, it would dry out, and it would end up looking something kind of like this. And if you shake it, those are the seeds inside. <laughs> And then you would use this to make a banjo. Another cool thing about the gourd banjo is that people used animal skins to, for this part of the banjo called the head. Uh, another thing that's neat about the, about the gourd banjo is that if you notice it doesn't have any frets. And the frets usually tell musicians where to put their fingers, but if you play the gourd banjo the musician has to use their ear to figure out where to put their, put their fingers. So, I think it sounds really cool. Isn't that pretty? So, I'm going to sing a song called I Wish I Was a Mole in the Ground. And it's a song about animals, and I want you to help me sing it. And I want you to help me write a new verse to it. So, you need to think of three things. Think of an animal, think of where this animal is, and think of what it is doing. So, I came up with a verse as an example. And it's going to be about a hippo in a pond rolling in the mud. So you think of those three things, and I'll point at you when it's time for you to sing your verse. Here we go. Thank you. 
what your animal is and where it is. Here we go. I wish I was a... That's a good choice. <laughs> I wish I was a... Oh, sing it out loud. If I was a... I would... Now tell me what you would do. Very nice. Good choice. I wish I was a... Oh, wonderful verse. My absolute favorite. Let's sing the first verse again. I wish I was a mole in the ground. I wish I was a mole in the ground. I wish I was a mole in the ground. If I was a mole in the ground, I would root that mountain down. I wish I was a mole in the ground. I wish I was a mole in the ground. Thank you for singing with me, and I'll see you next time. Bye.